Hi, Wolf again. Second of a series um, of videos talking about the built-in terraforming tools. Now, what I want to do with this one is talk about the flatten tool. Okay, so we have flatten is the second option down. It's the one under select land. So we're going to click on that, and we're going to come to these bumps and ridges and mountains that I created earlier um, in the previous video. Now, I'm going to use what most people use the flatten tool for, and just flatten out some of these areas that I was playing with and I could even flatten out this mountain. Now there's a couple of things. Firstly, flatten is a little difficult to understand. It's not necessarily what you think it is. I mean if I click on the top of the mountain here, will it go and flatten the top of the mountain? Well, it will, but the what's important to you generally is what height will it flatten it to. Okay, so if I click right on the top here, it will raise the rest of the top of the mountain up to be the same level. What if I wanted it to be lower than that and flat? Well, you could play around with the lower tool and then try and smooth it and flatten it out. But you can actually pick a point somewhere down the slope. The level that it flattens to is the level that that little bulldozer is at when you first click the mouse button. And then all the time you hold the mouse button and move the mouse around, it will flatten everything. It will either raise or lower everything to the same level that you were at when you started. So if I pick about halfway down this mountain and click and hold it and then move it around, it starts to flatten here. Okay, again, well, one of the limits of the terraforming tool is very prone to accidents. If I'm moving that down and just happen to slip over here, I've got a huge peak that's also trying to be at the same height. Okay, I'm going to flatten that one out by starting at an area next to it which is lower and flattening that out. Okay, I have a horrible piece of flat land down there now which we'll fix later. So it's a useful tool if used with caution. Again, best used from above. So pick a point halfway down and flatten it out. And go back and check that we got the effect we want list a few spikes, get around, and an accident again you see this is the problem with the, with the built-in tools it's very very easy to make mistakes and affect something in another area okay so we'll sort that one out later on but what I do want to talk about now is the other great power of the flatten tool very little of my terrain actually ever ends up flat um, it doesn't feel very natural unless I'm trying to build some structure on top of it, in which case it looks like it's been artificially flattened as you would, would expect. Most of the time I use this tool, and it is my favourite one of all the built-in tools, what I'm actually doing is creating the opposite of the flatten tool, but I'm using the same tool to do it. So let me explain this. If I take the size down, okay, keep the strength down as I said before to about 25% or so, unless you're very confident with what you're doing. Now, I have here the beginnings of a much more natural looking mountain. And what I want to do is bring out a ridge from here along one side. Okay, now you wouldn't think that you would use the flatten tool to do that. But if you think of it as a brush, what we've done before is just like slamming the whole brush down and moving it round almost in a kind of a childlike way of painting. But what we're going to look now is a more mature use of the technique. So we use a small brush and we pick a point, so where we want the sort of height of our ridge to be, and we move the little selection area over it. And then what we're going to do is instead of clicking it and holding it, which we could do, we could raise the whole ridge out following a little pattern and it would all be the same height, but again it would look artificial. But what we're going to do is make little brush strokes. So we're only going to sort of click the mouse button for a fraction of a second and then release it and while we're clicking it we're just going to quickly sort of flick it off to one side so what we're doing is creating gentle brush strokes so if I do that on here and I sort of pull this area out and just a quick click and flick outwards if you hold it too long you end up with a flat part but don't worry about that too much because we're going to keep dragging it out so the flat parts will disappear but it's literally just like a click and drag very 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 quickly little flicks of the brush because that's what these tools are, they are effectively brushes and you're painting it with various different effects on the land and what that's doing, instead of affecting an image maybe sort of a, a digital painting or something, what you're doing is you're painting different levels onto the terrain so we're going to drag it out a bit more, pull out some sort of higher land and bring out 
over one sort of side, bring out some more sort of higher land from over here. And now when we look down at it, we've got a much more natural. You can see it's kind of flat on the top. Again, we can break that up and bring out some at this height, just along the top of it. So wherever you start with that mouse is the height that you will go, and you're only doing little flicks of the brush. So as long as you pick different heights each time and make it quite random where you start, those little brushes will extend to different heights. There you go. It's much more natural looking. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create, in the opposite way, we're going to create a kind of a hollow in the side of it here. So just the same technique, I'm going to use an even smaller brush to do this, and I'm going to push in with little flicks from the bottom. So I'm picking sort of areas around about the flatter area down here, and I'm flicking into, clicking and dragging really quickly into the cliff. And what we end up with is a flattish area. It's not obviously completely flat. We can sort of tweak it around, make it look more natural. And a steeper cliff where we've flicked into it. So what we have there is something that's almost the opposite of what you would expect the flatten tool to do. And it's very, very good at doing exactly that. At sort of, it's like you're extruding the side of a mountain. And it's probably the very last thing you would think to use a flatten tool for, but it creates a really good effect. Okay, you need to practice with that. Be careful. Use an area of your land that you don't have anything built on. Make sure that you face either directly down or out so you don't have any land behind it that you might accidentally click. And have a play with the flatten tool. And that's it. I shall go on to the smoothing tool in the next video. Thanks a lot for listening.